serve as the athletic director. It's my privilege to be your master of ceremonies for tonight. I want to welcome everyone to the fifth annual Andrews Athletic Hall of Fame banquet and induction ceremony. Fifty years ago, Andrews opened its doors to welcome the first group of students to enroll at the new high school in High Point. Over these 50 years, many outstanding athletes, coaches, and dedicated contributors to the athletic program have made their indelible mark on the history of the school. The Hall of Fame currently has 53 members, and tonight, 11 more coaches and athletes will be recognized for their outstanding achievements and will be added to this select group. The visionary and driving force behind this Hall of Fame is Pete Hunter. At this time, I would like to call upon him for his welcome and a few remarks. Pete Hunter. Thank you very much. I'm Pete Hunter, and I was on the ground floor when Andrews opened up in 1968. Uh, Andrews High School, the facility was just a shell. They were still moving dirt. They had no floor, they had no reason for anything. And of course, uh, for those of you that were here, uh, you know we had to load up on the activity bus to drive over to William, William Penn for the practice football. And of course, we played all of our games at that time at Delaware uh, I mean, at uh, Little Stadium, I believe that's where it was. At least on High Point University campus. Good evening. As chairman of the T. Wingate Andrews High School Athletic Hall of Fame Committee, and on behalf of the committee, I uh, welcome you to the fifth annual T. Wingate Andrews High School Athletic Hall of Fame induction uh, banquet. So we will recognize those individuals who, through their accomplishments, accomplishments have brought pride and distinction to our school and community as either an athlete athlete, coach, administrator, or contributor to the development and success of T. Wingate Andrews High School Athletic Program. Uh, we have a program and everything will follow the program and of course uh, for those of you who do not know the inductees will be amazed at the accomplishment and we hope that you will enjoy. Calling now upon Mike McDowell, one of the committee members of the Hall of Fame, for our invocation. And following that, we give instructions about the dinner. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, we have gathered here tonight to celebrate and honor these men and women who have accomplished much in the arena of athletics and in life both at Andrews High School and beyond. Tonight we celebrate together as part of the Red Raider family that for 50 years has seen great accomplishment and success within our school and in our community. We seek to honor these 11 men and women who have excelled and brought honor to themselves, their families, their school, and their community. We thank you, God, for the gift of life and the talents and gifts that you have bestowed on each of us. We acknowledge that all we have and all that we have accomplished is a result of your goodness and mercy. As we look back and reflect on the accomplishments of each of these inductees, we're ever mindful that ultimately, none of these accomplishments were possible without you, our creator. That we were and are created to bring you glory and praise. Father, we defer to you for you alone are worthy to receive all praise and honor. Our lives and accomplishments pale beside what you have done for us. Lord Jesus, thank you for setting the example of living a perfect life that was and is continuing to bring honor, praise, and glory to the Father. So Father, would you bless our time here tonight, bless those who have prepared this meal, and bless it to the nourishment of our body. We pray and ask all these things in the blessed name of Jesus. 
Thank you, Mike. Um, we will have dinner now, and then we will have the program afterwards. We have a buffet tonight, so the lines are formed back here. We can, pardon me for pointing the line. Point, but it's easier from up here. The buffet line starts on this side and goes down. The drinks are in the back on this side and the desserts. There's a specialty cake back there to take a look at. But we're saving that till the conclusion of the ceremony when we will cut that and everybody will be able to take of that. Uh, to start the buffet, let's start so that everybody doesn't make one mad rush to it. Let's start over here with the three or four tables on this side. If you could, just please stand on up and go to the buffet line and then we'll release a few tables in just another minute or two. Thank you, just bear with us and we'll get everyone correct. <laughs> and I will call the minor class that are here and I'd ask them to stand and remain standing until all have been introduced. And if you could hold your applause until the very end of that. In the first class of 2014, Melvin Fair, and you did listen. I said, <laughs> and also Brenda Jo Thomas. Brenda Jo is over here. From the class of 2015, John Pizzazza, Ruth Ellen McDowell. Sam Harrison Reeves. I had Sam Sanders, but I don't think Sam. Sam, good. Yeah. good. Sam. And representing Pat Walsh, her daughter-in-law Muriel is here tonight. From the class of 2016, yep, representing Matt Bowles, his wife Margaret. Ronnie Johnson, Sue Shin, AC Spencer, is AC here? And, and myself. And from the class of 2017, Robert Murphy and Jennifer Taylor. Let's give them all a round of applause. Several people have asked me, how do you um, nominate someone for the Hall of Fame? One of the requirements to be in the Hall of Fame is you have to be nominated and have the supporting information sent in for the committee to consider. On the main table, as you came in and as you leave, there are nomination forms there. You can also go to the school website, athletic website, and find the nomination forms there. And we do ask, please send as much information as you possibly can on an individual if you would like to nominate them. I would like to introduce our Hall of Fame committee members. These are the people that work behind the scenes to select the class, to be sure everything goes correctly, and then we have a wonderful banquet. First of all, Principal Commander in High School, Marcus Goss, and his wife Tamika is here. Marcus, you can please stand. Athletic Director Rod Pitt, and Assistant Athletic Director Ben Robinson. Okay. Also, members Pete Hunter, you met Pete. Darlene Mason, our Secretary. <coughs> Mike McDowell, who gave the invitation. Robert Murphy. Eddie Raynard could not be here tonight. His son Lamar is playing for, obviously, NCA and T tonight on television against South Carolina State. So uh, fatherly duties to precedence there. And also Sue Shin. Sue, if you can. These are your committee members. Let's give them a round of applause. <laughs> we have several former coaches uh, present here tonight. I'd like them to stand too, please. Uh, you met John Pizzazza, but John, if you would please stand. John Coach Andrews, also was an athletic director there. Robert Clemens, sorry, John. Keith Flynn. John Patterson. 
give them a round of applause. And is Assistant Principal Duran Blackston from Andrews here? I was informed he was going to be here. Okay, good. Thank you for being here. We have several former faculty members here too from Andrews. We're glad that they were able to come out and keep supporting the Hall of Fame. Darnell Bullens, please stand, Darnell. Libby Tate Sebastian. And also Carol Plankson Lambert, the wife of one of our inductees this night. Thank you. several members of the media present and we want to thank the High Point Enterprise also for the wonderful write-ups that they uh, gave of the Hall of Fame class and for the anticipated wonderful write-up about the banquet tonight in the Hall of Famers. Michael Lindsay, sports writer, and also photographer Laura Green. Laura is an Andrews graduate of here too. <laughs> Doing photography for tonight, we have Abby Woodward. Abby, please stand. <laughs> and doing the videography is Greg Bates back there in the back. He's standing up behind the video camera. <laughs> if anyone would like um, a CD of the pictures of the banquet tonight and of the induction at halftime of the football game tomorrow, or if you would like to purchase a video that is being done of just the banquet itself, there are forms out on the table for you to pick up on the way out, and I believe the price of those is twenty dollars. If I'm not mistaken. There's a group we'd like to uh, recognize too that came in support of Mike Lambert, and that's uh, members of his 1971 state runner-up wrestling team that are here tonight in support. Bart Lassiter, Bart, hit the back table back there. Bart, please stand up. Maybe on the chair, Bart, stand up. <laughs> uh, Melvin Fair. Mike Sullivan. And Dwayne Fagg. Thank you, man. One of the goals of our Hall of Fame committee from the outset was to be able to give back to the School, especially in the form of scholarships for the serving students. Last year we were on a sound enough financial basis to begin the scholarship program. The first scholarship in the amount of $500 went to Nicholas Quick who is now attending UNCG. Nicholas could not be here at the banquet tonight because he's playing club football in the half at UNCG and they have a game tonight, but his mother Robin Quick is here representing him. Robin, could you please stand? Thank you and congratulations. In the back of your program, the inside back cover, I think one of the back pages are a list of some of the sponsors that gave at different levels. And also, we began something this year uh, called a, a challenge, if you want to call it that. And we appreciate the people who donated money to fund such as that because all the monies from the challenge, of course, are going to go toward future scholarships for Red Raiders. And the idea is. We hope in the future to be able to increase the amount as well as the number of scholarships that we're given. Okay. Now a few housekeeping items before we begin the actual induction ceremony. Please leave the tape decorations and cards on the table. <laughs> uh, we, we like to reuse those and saves the committee some work and some expense as well. Inductees tonight, you have received an envelope about the football game tomorrow night where you'll be introduced at halftime. We would like you to arrive by 7.15 if you could. There's reserved seating just in front of the press box for you. There will also be a hospitality room in the press box as well for you and your family if you wish to partake of that. About five minutes to go in the second quarter, Ms. Shin will get everybody together and lead you down on the field and introductions will take place during halftime for that. And then for tonight's ceremony, at the conclusion of the bank, uh, excuse me, after you've been introduced, 
We ask that you come forward. Pete Hunter will put the medallion around your neck, and then you'll have a chance for some remarks. At the conclusion of the banquet, and I'll remind you of this, we want to bring all the inductees back up, so we will have a to recognize again and have you for the picture. And of course, friends and family are welcome to take the picture, certainly at that time as well. And also, during that time when we're taking the pictures, maybe some of you saw in the back the specialty cake that was provided. And at that particular time, for those that are still hungry, the cake will be sliced, and you may partake of that as well. We want to thank Above and Beyond Catering, too, for the wonderful meal tonight. I think that's most of the announcements, and we will be ready to begin at this time. Um, normally we do these in alphabetical order, but we have uh, one family member who has to uh, have to enough function, so we're going to uh, change the order. I'm going to introduce Candy, Michael, and Man first, and then we will go in alphabetical order after that. Okay. Candy, Michael, McMahon. Marshall played softball and tennis. It was in basketball that Candy excelled. This 1981 graduate was all conference for three years and the conference player of the year for senior season. Candy scored 1,093 points in her Andrews career and played in the East West All Star game. She was a member of the National Honor Society and selected as the most athletic in her class. Candy earned a full basketball scholarship to Duke University, where she led it all four years. During her junior year, she led the Blue Devils in scoring and was the Atlantic Coast Conference leader in free throws attempted and free throws made. She set a then school record of 31 consecutive games, scoring in double figures, and scored 999 points during her career. After graduating from Duke, Candy played basketball professionally in England for one season before joining the corporate world. Uh, Candy is married. Her husband Ray is here tonight. They live in Caswell County in Ruffin, and they have an alpaca farm. They raise alpacas and have a bed and breakfast and a farm store in conjunction with that. Please welcome Candy Michael McMahon to Andrew Beckham.
Captain his senior year winning the best blocker award and selected to play in the 1975 North-South All-Star Game in Greenville. 
and he earned a football scholarship to East Carolina. He was a starter at Andrews all three years in wrestling and was coached by fellow Hall of Fame inductee Mike Lambeth. In addition to being all-conference, Steve was the 1974 heavyweight state wrestling champion. At that time, all schools, regardless of size, wrestled for the state championship. Steve assisted several high school wrestling programs in the area and has, has enjoyed a 43-year work career with Thomasville Buses. He still lives in High Point, married to wife Joyce, and has three children. Please welcome Steve Campbell to the T. Winnicott Andrews Athletic Hall of Fame. Good evening. Good evening. First of all, let me 
thank the Hall of Fame Committee for uh, this distinguished honor. I am so proud to be a part of the group of the inductees tonight, and I want to congratulate all the other inductees. Uh, I'd like to thank three coaches in particular who are responsible for my success and accomplishments over the years. Um, first is Ms. Frances Wall, who was my junior high school coach and was the first to introduce me to girls' team sports. Uh, also, Ms. Pat Hester, who, who coached me during my sophomore year at High Point Central. Uh, and there she allowed me to play on the varsity girls basketball team. I appreciate that and I've learned so much. And then finally, my third coach uh, in high school was Ms. Brenda Jo Thomas, who coached me two years at Andrews High. These coaches not only this, um, not only introduced me to uh, girl sports in general, but they instilled in me a sense of determination uh, and a winning attitude. They taught me to play hard and, and never, ever give up. I'd like to thank my teammates for their support because without them, I could not have succeeded in the things that I did. One of them is here tonight. Kathy Johnson, would you please stand and be recognized? <laughs> Finally, I'd like to thank my family and friends for their love and support and always being there for me. Not only did I enjoy sports, but they prepared me for dealing with life's challenges. Um, I've had, as we all have, challenges over, over the years, but the one thing that they, in, a, they prepared me for was to believe in myself, never give up, and always trust in God. I would, um, If, if I've had a positive impact on anybody <clears throat> that have crossed my life, I am so grateful for it. Uh, and I hope that I will continue to do so. Um, thank you again for this honor and God bless. Central and a member of their Hall of Fame as an athlete. He made the All-State football team on two occasions, one year as a lineman and the other as a running back. The only person to be named All-State at two different positions in successive years. He earned a football scholarship to then High Point College where he was a four-year starter. After a two-year stint in the Marine Corps, Hugh began a 41-year coaching career. 34 of those in the public schools of North Carolina. Hugh coached football, wrestling, and baseball on two different occasions at Andrews, 1973 through 75, and again from 1979 through his retirement in 1986. In 1986, Coach Gordon was named Coach of the Year for the High Point City Schools. Coach Gordon's contributions to Andrews athletics involved so much more than his interactions with athletes on the playing field. Hugh brought the Fellowship of Christian Athletes to the campus and served as its adult total leader. He developed an academic program for
for our athletes and a football academic playbook that was copied by many North Carolina high schools and featured in a Georgia Tech recruiting video. After retirement, Coach Gordon coached at Guilford College and Pinecrest High School in Florida until his passing in 1993. Here tonight are his wife, Sarah, and his daughter, Allison, and son, Cliff, and accepting on Coach Gordon's behalf will be his daughter, Allison. Please welcome Hugh Gordon. And you can't go home again. But that's not true. In 1979, Coach Hugh Gordon left a successful program coaching with the staff he coached with previously. Of course, he knew he was coming home to be part of an outstandingly successful athletic program and coaching staff. But it was much more than just coming to a prominent athletic program. Coach Gordon was coming to finish out his North Carolina high school coaching career at a place holding a special part of his heart. He was coming home, and home was Tom Wankett Andrews. On behalf of my family, my mom Sarah, my brother Cliff, we would like to express our thanks to T.W. Andrews Athletic Hall of Fame Committee and those who nominated my dad. He would be very humbled and honored to be recognized and included in such a distinguished group of coaches, athletes, and supporters. Dad would be particularly delighted being inducted with his fellow coach and dear friend, Mike Lambeth, who he coached with at Andrews and A.L. Lamb High School. I remember on countless occasions, Dad saying Mike is the smartest coach he ever worked with. Congratulations to the other inductees, and especially to Steve Campbell, Kim Johnson, Warren Marshall, Dean McCullough, and Jasper Sanders. Coach Gordon would be proud to stand beside you tonight, and having had the privilege of being a small part of your athletic career here at Andrews. Home is where the heart is. Dad was proud to be a part of the heartbeat of the rich tradition of Red Raider athletics the bonds formed with coaches, athletes, teachers, and all of those in the Red Raider Nation were also very cherished by Dad. That was evident in all the pictures, newspaper clippings, and lists he collected and composed about so many of you here tonight, and members of the TWA Athletic Hall of Fame and others associated with High Point Andrews. The collection not only included accomplishments made at Andrews, but also your college and life accomplishments. I really wish I could have brought it all here to share with you, but it meant hauling two big Tupperware containers of stuff. I keep in my office one of the prayer lists that he kept in his office. <coughs> On this list are some of you, the FCA Huddle Group and its leaders. You were part of his heartbeat, his family. I can probably say one of the most important lists to him was the list of those who received student athletic scholarships. He kept that list where they went to school and how much money they were given. The academic program he created was his pride and joy. And he was particularly proud of the year 100% of the senior football players either went to college or joined the military. And Dean, if I'm not mistaken, you are in that graduating class. This summer, I had the privilege of hearing 
Hall of Fame member Johnny Evans speak at the South Carolina Coaches SCA luncheon. Dad started SCA at Andrews in 1973. And another thing that this was very, very precious to his heart. Johnny told how he became involved in SCA due to Dad. He really did. It brought tears to my eyes to hear the sweet words Johnny had to say. Afterwards, I told Johnny how proud Coach was of him and all the accomplishments, and especially going on to be a North Carolina director of SCA. As I look out on this exceptional group of people here tonight, I am more than a little sad. And for those of you who knew him affectionately, Bob Todd isn't here to be with his Red Raider family. You know that he loved a good story, and oh gosh, the stories that could be told. Coaching trips to Myrtle Beach in Greensboro, corn bust at the barn, feasting on tomato sandwiches, and taking naps at our house between two a day that resulted in the band-aid on the tree in front of our house. You remember those days, don't you? John Cazazza, Keith Flynn, Robert Clemens and John Patterson. Dad also loved the Saturday trips he took you players to college football games. And yes, it is okay to admit to it, it was terrifying to ride with Dad. <laughs> Cliff and I always were too. Also cherished by Dad were the long lasting friendships made with the coaches. It's been 40 plus years of friendships with Mike and Carolyn uh, Lambeth. Excuse me. <laughs> um, several years ago, when Andrews was playing for the state championship, and they won, I called mom after the game to see if she knew. She said yes, because she, Linda Whiteman, wife of former Andrews coach Billy Whiteman, and Jean Boswell watched the game on TV. Like they did 40 years earlier, these three women were watching the Red Raiders play football. I wish I had the time to mention each and every one of you out there that meant so much to Dad, because you were all so, so very, very special to him and how a big piece of his heart. I will leave all the incredible athletic accolades and accomplishments to the others to speak about. I wanted to speak about what was so special to Dad and being a part of Thomas Wingate Andrews' family. So yes, you can go home again. Thank you very much. Tim Johnson was a multi-sport athlete while at Andrews. As a sophomore, Tim averaged 15 points per game with the conference champion JV basketball team. As a junior, he was the all-conference center fielder on the baseball team that reached the state semifinals. As a senior, Tim played on the golf team that won the conference championship, advancing through the regionals to the state tournament. But it was in football that Tim made his mark. He played both ways and was all conference his junior and senior years. The 12 and 1 1972 team was the 4A state champion, and the 1973 team went 10 and 1. Tim played in the North South All Star game. After graduating in 1974, Tim earned a football scholarship from North Carolina State. He played all four years and was a starting running back for three years on teams that went to three bowl games. At one point, the starting backfield at North Carolina State consisted of TWA Hall of Famers, Johnny Evans, Ted Brown, and now Tim Johnson. Tim lives in Chapel Hill with his wife, Kim. His daughter, Tessa, is here. And we welcome Tim Johnson into the Andrews Athletic Hall of Fame. Congratulations.
have to say, I'm not quite as prepared as everybody else was. <laughs> but it's good to see some familiar faces I hadn't seen in a long time. Uh, it's good to be back at High Point uh, when I started my sports career when I was probably five years old. And a lot of people out of the audience out here probably played sports with me all through five years old until I graduated high school. And, uh, some of my best memories are high school and the people I played with and the coaches I had. It was a good experience. And um, I'd just like to thank the committee. And it's nice seeing Coach Hunter again. It's been a while. Uh, the committee and everybody that has anything to do with this. I know it's a lot of hard work. Um, and I appreciate it. Thank you. coaching staff when the school opened in 1968. Mike coached football, wrestling, track, and golf for seven years, from 1968 to 1975. During Mike's time at Andrews, the football teams were 1972 4A state champions and also went 10-1 in 1973. Mike coached TWA Hall of Famers Ronnie Johnson, Johnny Evans, Ted Brown, and Tim Johnson. In track and field, Mike and Coach Bill Whiteman won five conference championships. Mike coached Hall of Famer Jesse Ratliff, the pole vault state champion. Coach Lambeth started the Andrews wrestling program from scratch. When the school opened, the gym was not completed. The wrestling team practiced in the William Penn Library and held its home matches at High Point Central. Coach Lambeth's teams were conference champions six times and state runners up in 1971. He was conference coach of the year five times and coach state champion and Andrews Hall of Famers, Melvin Fair, Felix Setzer, and Steve Campbell. Following his years at Andrews, Coach Lambeth coached 21 more years before retiring from Kannapolis High School in 1996. Mike and his wife Carolyn live in Kannapolis and accepting tonight for Mike is his wife, Carolyn Planson Lambert. Mike and Carolyn met while they were at Andrews. She was a math teacher and the cheerleading coach. And 42 years later, they're still together. Please welcome Mike Lambert into the Andrews Hall of Fame and Carol, his wife, Carolyn, his wife, accepting on his behalf.
having great athletes and great coaches to work with made everything come together very many times. The friendships and memories made here have lasted through today. Coach Bob Boswell, Coach Bill Whiteman, Coach Hugh Gordon, Coach Corey McRae, who nominated him, and of course, me. Thank you for this honor and for putting Mike among the great coaches of Andrews High School. Thank you. selected in 1981 as the team's most improved player. He helped lead the 1981 teams on an 11-2 record, advancing to the state 4A state semifinal game. In track, Warren ran all three relays and at the time of his graduation, held the school record in both the low and high hurdles. Warren earned a football scholarship to James Madison University, where he had an outstanding career. He was a four-year starter and the team's most valuable offensive player for three years. He finished as James Madison's all-time leading rusher, 4,186 yards, and scored 34 touchdowns. He holds numerous other James Madison career records and was twice their athlete of the year. Warren was chosen three times by the Associated Press as an honorable mention All-American. He was selected in the sixth round of the 1987 National Football League draft by the Denver Broncos and finished his professional career with the now Arizona Cardinals. Warren was inducted into the James Madison University Hall of Fame in 2000. Warren lives in Raleigh. He and his wife, Denise, have been married 29 years. He has two sons that cannot be here. Keith, who went to the University of Georgia and played football with the Washington Redskins, and Marcus, wow. who's a senior running back at James Madison University now. He lives in Raleigh, as I said, as an independent realtor and investor. Please welcome Warren Marshall to the Andrews Athletic Hall of Fame.
2018 Hall of Fame, uh, I guess, inductee. I really, really appreciate it. It's a great honor uh, to get this opportunity to, to kind of come and, and speak with you guys and share this with uh, some of my teammates, uh, Dean Cullen. Not only we played Andrews together, we also played at James Madison together. So uh, it's a great honor to, to go in with Dean. I'd like to thank my wife for being here and her continued support. Um, and, you know, obviously my wonderful kids that, that we, we share uh, that couldn't be here for different reasons. But, um, and, you know, overall, you know, high school sports, I think, is kind of where it starts. It's, you don't have to worry about all the craziness that we deal with when we're in college and all of that. So it was innocent. And, you know, for me, I think it was the beginning of what created that passion and, and that drive to want to be, you know, college and potentially, uh, you know, professional athlete. So I can't thank Andrews, you know, that experience, all of the teammates that I had, all of my friends that I made, lifelong friends, uh, for this uh, for this great honor. And uh, again, I just want to thank the Hall of Fame committee and everyone involved. And good night. Thanks. <laughs> Those roofing jobs in the hot summer, do you? <laughs> Lasting impression. Our next inductee is Dean McCullough. This three sport athlete played baseball, basketball, and football all three years at Andrews, graduating in 1983. Dean also served as a percussionist, as a drummer in the marching band and as a school bus driver. From his linebacker position on the football team, Dean led the team in tackles all three years, was all conference as a junior and senior, and selected the team's most outstanding defensive player. He earned a football scholarship to James Madison University. He led JMU in tackles for two years, and in 1986 was the defensive most valuable player, and an honorable mention All-American. After graduating as a math major in 1988, Dean began a high school teaching and coaching career that now spans 30 years. He has coached football and basketball at Trinity, Ragsdale, and Southern Guilford. Since 2012, he has served as the athletic director at Smith High School in Greensboro. And Dean and his wife Dawn reside in Greensboro and have four children, Julia, Madison, Peyton, and Aiden. Please welcome Dean McCullough to the T.W. Andrews Athletic Hall of Fame.
back. Uh, there's nothing like being outside and meeting people, building relationships. Uh, life just was good for me. And uh, I had an opportunity to uh, grow up with my brothers that were role models for me. Uh, really wanted to play football. I, coach was talking about Duke University. First opportunity, I had coaching in Little League from Dwight Baumgart. He was a Hall of Fame at Duke University. So I started out just being surrounded with people that know the game. And I get to Griffin Middle School and we go undefeated. And it was two things I wanted to do in life once I learned a little bit about the, the goals of being a Red Raider. It was something about the number 55. That's the jersey I wanted to wear. Chris Hamburg was a linebacker for the Redskins. And my oldest brother, Jerry, wore number 55. The Raiders used to have something on kickoff with a skull and a crossbow. And you wore a little towel right here. And when the guys kick the ball off, you're supposed to go down and bust the wedge and hopefully make the tackle. My brother didn't do that. He went to find three or four bodies that he could take out, and he would worry about his teammates making the, making the plays. So I had an opportunity to wear 55 in middle school, but being distinguished, it was an honor. We had two new jerseys, 95 and a 99. <coughs> Coach said, anybody that shows up and uh, steps out of the bounds in terms of being exceptional, you would earn those jerseys. I earned that jersey, and I wore it for about two weeks. And I told Coach, I said, I want my 55 back. <laughs> I took my 55 back, and I went on to high school. Uh, looking at high school, it's something about the fog that rolls around when you get near that campus. It's something about a drum. Those of you that have been around, you've seen that Raider with that nose and that Indian on there, there was something about that drum. I said when I get there, I'm beating that drum. <laughs> I beat the drum. We had a great band. You know, I look at some of the bands now, they're running 35, 40. We were strong, about 135. So I played JV football after practice, took a shower, uh, went to band practice. Uh, drove school buses. It was nothing that I was not going to be involved with. I stayed active. I stayed busy. Um, get to high school. I had to make a decision. Coach Goins said, you and Lindell Vick are going to be playing a little bit of tight end, so you guys can't wear those jerseys. I said, okay. So Lindell took 24. I said, well, quarterback numbers are very popular at 14. I said, I'm taking 14. Well, little did I know 14, I was not the quarterback, which is the person that normally leads and calls everything. But on the defensive side, in my mind, I was the quarterback. I had to call what was necessary. I was able to make adjustments. And gosh, was I blessed with teammates. Was I blessed with teammates. Um, first thing I came to mind when I found out about the induction ceremony, I'm like, I can't take credit for this by myself. I had a bunch of teammates that we just did everything together. We built, we learned to lead, we learned to follow. And uh, I'm just so excited to be here. I'd like to acknowledge a few of my family members, my brother right here, Freddie, uh, his new wife, and my father right here, and then my new in-laws, uh, Mr. John and Patsy Bright. And without my coaches, You're in a community, when you're younger and your older brothers have gone through, we had teachers and coaches that stayed there for years. They invested in us. And your, your name meant something. And I want to be someone that honors the McCullough name. And I appreciate everything that you guys have done for me and my family and the induction ceremony committee. I'd like to thank all of you. Good night.
Our next inductee is Hassan Reddick. Hassan made the most of his two years of athletic participation at Andrews. Persuaded by Andrews Hall of Fame coach Neil Morris to run track, Hassan participated in the high and low hurdles, but the triple jump was his best event. Showing tremendous improvement from his junior to his senior year, Hassan placed fifth in the triple jump at the 1999 High School National Indoor Championships and follow up afterwards becoming the North Carolina State 3A champion. He was selected Andrew's most outstanding field athlete. Graduating in 1999, Hassan won a full scholarship to Indiana University. He made the All Big Ten team and was featured on the cover of the Indiana University Track and Field Media Guide. Hassan graduated in 2003 from Indiana with a degree in kinesiology and has been involved in clinical research for the past 15 years. He lives in High Point, works in Greensboro for ICON, and runs clinical trials for big pharmaceutical companies. Please help me welcome Hassan Reddick, T.W. Andrews Athletic Hall of Fame. sets up three cones and he said, what I want you to do is jump to this cone on one foot and jump to that cone on the other and then switch up and then jump to that cone. I just happened to be, the, I did the best in that. Um, fast, and fast forward, I'm on the track team, this is junior year. And I didn't really know what I was doing. I was just a long, lanky kid, uh, had a little bit of ability and was that I was just having fun and had an opportunity to uh, go to indoor national senior year and uh, Coach Morris, God, yeah, uh, takes <laughs> Coach Morris. He, he's touched so many lives, but I'll never forget uh, going to indoor national senior year. He took four kids that weren't his own all the way to Ohio uh, in the snow <laughs> and uh, watched over us that weekend and, and uh, watched us compete, brought us all back. And um, what I didn't know was when I was at home sleeping, because we got back really late, we took the red eye back and uh, got back really early that morning. Uh, I was home to sleep, but uh, Neil Morris uh, went and got my file and Got the guidance counselor and the principal together and said, okay, uh, boys from all American, let's see what we can do with it. And from, uh, I show up the next day and I'm in honors classes. <laughs> <laughs> so um, everything that I was able to do uh, in Indiana, none of that would have been possible without Neil Morris. And I just thank God for him and I miss that man like you would not believe. And so uh, I know you're down here watching, Coach. Uh, thank you for um, doing what you did. <laughs> yeah, thank you for everything. But um, uh, thank you to the committee for this honor. When I got the phone call, I didn't know what to say. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm hearing all these stories about these uh, tremendous athletes, and I just hope uh, that I am truly worthy to be among you. Uh, but uh, I'd like to also give uh, my 
about the fear. Thank you to my mother for always being there. Thank you for instilling in me the stick to itness to just continue to be great at whatever I do. Don't give up, keep trying. If you fail, get up, dust yourself off, and get back in there, boy. Um, yeah. Without uh, people like my mother, Coach Morris, uh, the man that you see before you today, wouldn't, wouldn't be here. Uh, yeah. I'm looking at you now. Thank you, Mama, uh, for everything. I love you. Um, you know, like we say, uh, God, you and me, kid. Uh, thanks, everyone. Uh, I really appreciate it. God bless you all. Our next inductee is Jasper Sanders. Jasper was a 1980 graduate of Andrews who played football and wrestled all three of his high school years. In football, he was a linebacker and named a co-captain of the 1979 playoff team. However, it was in wrestling that Jasper made his mark. He only lost three times in his high school career. He was a three-time conference and sectional champion and a two-time regional champion. Jasper was All-State all three years of high school and the two-time state 141-pound champion in 1979 and again in 1980. And again, at that time, wrestling was not divided into classifications. There was only one state champion in each weight class. The 1979 Andrews team finished as the state runner-up. After graduation, Jasper joined the military, retiring in 2003 after over 20 years of service. Jasper lives in Fayetteville with his wife, Robin, of 36 years. He has two sons, Jeremy and Corey, Corey being in the Special Forces, and daughter Jasmine is now a senior at Winston-Salem State. While he's left the military, you find him about every day at Fort Bragg, still works in contract work with the federal government works in explosives of all things. <laughs> Jasper, congratulations, and please help me welcome him to the Andrews Athletic Hall of Fame. Thank you. served me very well. Had an opportunity to raise uh, two sons and a daughter. My daughter, she's now a senior at Winston-Salem State, getting ready to graduate in May with her Bachelor of Science in Nursing. And so all I'm doing very well on staff today. I'd like to thank my mother. She has always been my rock. You know what I mean? I was real wild, but she kept me straight. Her father, father, and sister. My mother's 92 years young. And she still go to church every Sunday she's able to go. And uh, we kind of grew up real close. Every Sunday before we went to church, we always have prayer breakfast together and stuff there. And did the things that unite a family and keep the family strong. You know? And uh, look out amongst you. It's great to see all of you. And I'm very, very appreciative.
for being nominated to this uh, very select committee. I uh, like to tell you a little story about Hugh Gordon. Most of the wrestlers was always real tired because you compete all day. You may some days wrestle three or four times a day. So Hugh Gordon was the one always driving the bus. Everybody sleep, except Hugh Gordon and myself. The reason I didn't go to sleep because Coach Gordon, Alec, was kind of tired, so I figured if I could strike a conversation with him, keep him on the road, keep all of us in mind. <laughs> but Hugh Gordon was a great man. And we had great conversations, all he shared with me about his wartime experiences and stuff there. And he was a guy that was very resilient, and he always had time to share a little love with everybody, you know? And he was a mentor, and he did real well with uh, young folks because he could reach it. And I think that's the biggest gap sometimes you have with coaches and uh, young people because of that generation gap and stuff there. But he's done very well in that. And uh, I appreciate everybody for showing up, and I greatly appreciate everything. Good night. volleyball and softball co-captain and a three-year starter in each of these sports. In track, Dee Dee was a long and triple jumper, as well as throwing the shot and discus. At one time, she held the Andrews School records in both the shot and discus. In 1979, Dee Dee was a basketball co-captain, being named all-conference and all-state, while the team advanced to the state finals. She was also named a high school All-American and her number 24 jersey was retired by the school. Wow. After graduation, Dee Dee received an athletic scholarship to High Point College, where she played both volleyball and basketball. After two years, she transferred to Elon, where she started in softball, volleyball, and basketball. After making the Dean's List her senior year, Dee Dee graduated from Elon and became a director of Special Olympics in Burlington. She then joined the automobile sales business and has been involved with that for the past 32 years. Dee Dee currently lives in Thomasville and works with Triad in Motion at High Point as a sales and finance manager. Please welcome Dee Dee Wardlaw to the Andrews Athletic <laughs>
So after, after Griffin, I got to go to Andrews, and I could use my nickname, Dee Dee. So I was happy for that. And uh, Ms. Thomas, I'd like to thank you for allowing me to participate in, <coughs> in the fourth sport that Andrews has been my coach there. Now, Ms. Thomas, to this day, <coughs> she gave me another name. Yeah. It's Chump. She <laughs> calls me that to this day. I, I think that may have been a motivational word because I hate to lose and I hate to be called a chump. I think that really, really got me going. So, so I thank you, Ms. Thomas, for that name, Chump. And I thank you for allowing me to play at TV and get in. I'd like to thank my friends uh, and family for coming out to support me this evening. My teammates, I have a cover sitting at the table with me, Laverne, Antoinette, Candy Michaels, I think she's already left. She was one of my tough, oh, she, she's still there. Uh, she is one of my teammates as well. I love playing with them. We were all like sisters, one big family. And I love T. Wingate Andrews. And again, thank you to the Athletic Committee for accepting me as one of your Hall of Fame candidates. Congratulations, Dee Dee, and congratulations to all the inductees on a wonderful evening. Um, I want to remind everyone once again that the inductees will be honored at halftime of tomorrow night's football game at Reachful. We hope you can come and attend that. A reminder again to you about the nomination forms out on the table, order forms for the CDs and DVDs if you wish to participate in that. And at this time, I'd like to ask all the inductees to come back up to the front for one more recognition of the entire group. Thank you please come up.
Bradley, the Pueblo State Champion. Coach Lamb has started the Andrews Wrestling Program from scratch. When the school opened, the gym was not completed. The wrestling team practiced in the William Penn Library and held its home matches at Life Point Central. Coach Lamb and teams were conference champions six times and state runner up once. He was conference coach. Come on. 